Welcome back to the show. We're here to talk about sex and relationships is sexologist Dr. Limor Blockman. Hey, Limor, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm dear? doing very well. What do you have for us? Well, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic and very prevalent, uh, which is infidelity. And prevalent? It's so, yes. Don't tell me that. Unfortunately, it is. Oh, my. And, of course, we went and examined it. And in many studies, they examine, you know, the prevalence, the incidence, the, you know, uh, reasons for consequences mm -hmm. of infidelity. I'm wearing my bedroom eyes today, <laughs> just for I the like, sake of it. I like the smoky eye. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they went and questioned 2,000 people mm -hmm. in regards to their uh, extra, extramarital affairs. And what they came out with was very, what they came up with was very interesting and very unfortunate. Hmm. Um, and the first thing that was very surprising to me was that women reported to have at least the same level of infidelity than men or more. Really? Because yes. traditionally, at least in movies and yes. Hollywood, Apparently. you see that the man is always the yes. one to stray, but you're saying that women right. also stray. Yes, the women are straying a little, at least as much as men and sometimes more. Hmm. The second thing that they found was that men were more suspicious of infidelity on the end of, of their partners what? and more likely to find out about the affair. So women really? <laughs> just take it into account if you're, you know, playing around. Oh, <laughs> and another thing was that women were more likely to break up their relationship after being found out and mm. start a relationship with the philanderer that mm, they had really? an affair with. So this is another thing that was relevant to women. Um, women with higher level of education were actually more likely to cheat on their partners than uh, mm. women that were in, in, a, in a lower level of education. And on that note, women that were making more money than their partners, mm -hmm. they were uh, employed and making more money, bringing a bigger income, were more likely to have an affair mm -hmm. and probably even break up the relationship over So the it's affair. almost, a, I guess, could you say an ego thing with yes, women? Yes, absolutely. So mm -hmm. if I'm liberated, if I make a lot of money <laughs> and if this and that, I have the liberty to actually do this. It's kind of unfortunate to hear and, and to find out, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And another thing that they found is that couples that do not match on more than one trait, for instance, one is very attractive, the other one is maybe a little less, mm -hmm. or one is very intelligent and the other one is a little less, uh, they were more likely to cheat or to have an, a, a short or short affair or something in that manner mm -hmm. because of probably a lack of um, satisfaction in the relationship something was out of uh, out of sync mm -hmm. and that would be the which reason. is a big question is why do people stray what right. what causes this phenomenon right and that's a big question and I'm gonna attend to it I just want to say that um, websites like ashleymadison.com mm -hmm. I don't know if people are familiar with it is one of these places that facilitates um, extramarital affairs and I want to say that they had 31 million total users over. They, I, what happened after that big leak uh, where they leaked all of the users' names? They it's kept getting signs up. <gasps> yes. No way. And they make <laughs> over $115 million a year. Wow. Uh, in revenue. So it just makes sense that people are, you know, so as, as we asked last time, is monogamy dead? What's the, in, what's the, what's the situation? What are we going to do? And what do we need to do? Is, actually, is, is there something actually wrong? Hmm. Or this is the way we live our lives? Mm -hmm. And this is a big question, and I just I just want to say something that I didn't say last time, and I want to mention this time. The same level of possessiveness and jealousy are prevalent in a relationship that is monogamous or consensually non-monogamous or even cheating or anything of that mm -hmm. sort. Uh, infidelity is not necessarily uh, would make someone the, the actual the person that actually has an affair is not going to be less jealous if his partner has an affair as well. Hmm. So I just want to make it clear. Interesting. And I want to say the monogamy is, as I said, historically less natural to us, and we live much longer. So we have to take into account that there is a problem with the fact that we spend I don't know 50 years with the same partner. Sometimes it is a matter of uh, lack of communication, and this brings me to the next point. There has to be an open communication between the couples, and I'm going to uh, quote Nietzsche on this. Mm -hmm. He said that uh, breaking up a marriage, a marriage that is not going well, is not because of lack of love, but because of lack of, rela of uh, friendship. Oh, and friendship is a very important thing. If you take it, it into account, we don't lie and cheat our friends. We usually don't do things that we do to our partners. Mm. So take it into account. And another thing, yes, there has to be, as I said in, pr in prior shows, there doesn't have to be a specific... Uh, 
times that you have to have sex, but nobody signed up for celibacy. And if one partner feels that something is not going well, it has to be a communication, maybe opening the relationship. But cheating is really a very bad way to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know if I should be depressed um, <laughs> for, or, or happy. I'm not really sure. Um, well, but you know, creating a safe space and communication can help. But I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it's going to go away. Obviously, as we see, uh, the, the prevalence of it is very high. Well, Limor, thank you so much uh, for you. joining us today with this topic.